name is Alesta Elite if you'd rather and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very exciting video. It is the final tour of my Harry Potter island. It has been very long awaited I feel like. Sorry for the time it's taken to finally get to this point. Um, but yeah, I'm finally, I'm happy to finally be at this stage of the island. I've been, I think I've been designing this island for over a year now because I had a really long um, break from Animal Crossing for a while and like Instagram and everything like that and then I decided just after the new year in 2022 um, to just start the island again and here we are. So I started recording it a little ways into it which is when I did the first video um, which was the tour of my island so far where I'd started Privet Drive and done Diagon Alley and everything up to that point but then you guys saw the rest onwards. But yeah, thank you all so much for being here and sharing this journey with me. And I hope you like the video that I have for you today. So as you can see, we are in King's Cross Station. Now, this is just a small area because my resident service is quite close, but this is where it started. And I thought it was a perfect place to start the journey into the Hogwarts Island. So as you can see, we've just got the castle walls, the telephone box to represent London, and the uh, owl on the trolley there, just to make it look as though, you know, they're going into through platform nine and three quarters, which is right here at the right. And I used the custom design on the lights there just to fill in that gap, because it was a bit big, but before we go any further, here is the map. So as you can see, it's it's not that intricate of a map compared to other ones, but you can see my character Harry, Luna, then Chef for Hagrid, Lopez for James, Fang for Professor Lupin, Julian for Patronus, Curly for Dudley, Lolly for McGonagall, uh, Rodeo for Death Eater, um, just random one for that, Molly for Molly Weasley, Dobby for Dobby, and Marshall for Draco. So yeah, that is my residence for the island. I had my two normal residents. I wish that I thought ahead and ignore the fact that this is called Mirkwood. Um, <laughs> I didn't really think that far ahead when I was doing it to start with but yes anyways let's see. So we just we have the King's Cross station here and yeah there's not a whole lot to it but I just thought it was a nice little cozy entrance with like the serious black memorabilia and things like that but if you go through you have a little miniature journey as well you're on the train i love that custom design that's on the wall the creators of it are spot on um i'll link all of the codes down in the description as usual um but i just thought it'd be fun to have the little train there with the death eaters peeking through as well it's the prisoner of azkaban just with that little hint there and just like as well you could join along in the journey with the stepping stones. But if we make our way back, the, there's not a perfect way to go about the island. Um, to be honest, it's a little bit. I wish I focused on the structure of it a bit more, so that's what I'm gonna do on the next one. But yeah, that is the King's Cross Station. And I just thought it was really cute and simple. So let me know what you think. And we just have Rover's briefcase there. But yeah, if we go through here, we have the Leaky Cauldron. Now this, I wasn't, 100% happy with it. Um, there's some things that I, I don't know. I wish you could have a roof um, over it, like create custom buildings, but we're getting too far into the Sims if I go down that route. But yeah, I think it was cute. It was cozy and it, it did the job with like all like the rugged, the rugged, yeah, rugged rugs. Um, and just like the old dark furniture with the tables and all the food and things. So I think it did the job. And I just put some like the lost, uh, bags there just to represent coin pouches and just like a little inkwell um, just to make it feel as though people were writing and if we go through here I wish I turned this into the zoo so I do have regrets about that um, but I just made a little garden market which I'm I'm not happy with I do wish I changed it but it's too late now um, the island is done and I am not going back. I refuse to do anything more with it. But yeah, this is just the beginning of London if you come out from the left hand side. And yeah, I mean, it does the job. It fills in that space. And if we make our way down, this was just another random space filler. And it was just a place to have um, just a little seating area on the beach just to make it feel more like a city, but then my cottage core 
love came into it so I ended up creating a cottage called Beach which I'm also not happy about so we'll just ignore that and move on. Here is just a little car park area just to make it feel more like a city and if we go up we just have nooks cranny so yeah just some little shopping things around it. Yeah that's a little pathway going to the back which we'll get to later on but if we make our way back down this is what I'm saying I'm not happy with the whole layout of the island I think it could have been a bit better but we move, we move, and if we come here, we enter into Privet Drive. So I have the bike with all the owls and the letters outside just to make it represent the the film in the books, um, mind blank there. And we also have like the little pet bed just to represent the uh, the baby basket when Harry's first left there in the, in the Philosopher's Stone. So yeah, we have that little basket there. And if we go in, this is my D Dursley house. So we have Curly to represent Dudley because obviously he gets his pigtail. And if we just make our way in, you will see the house and of course he's asleep but how dare he wear a Ravenclaw jumper like sir please but yeah I think I did a pretty good job with this I'm happy it's very vintage looking and I used that to represent like the cupboard under the stairs at the right there and I just I don't know I'm quite happy with it I used the cake there to represent the cake that they use in the Chamber of Secrets and the old TV with all the presents at the left and all the old fashioned paintings and embroidery just to make it feel very vintage looking because they are a very old fashioned kind of family. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I wish you could customise the size of the interiors, um, but that's not an option. But yeah, I think this turned out really cute. So let me know what you think down below. Moving on from the Dursleys, once it loads, there we go, we'll make our way out and this is just a little bit more of Privet Drive. Um, it's okay, I'm not happy with how it ends. Um, there's a lot of things that I wish looking back that I would have changed. But yeah, this is just my Privet Drive, so that's Dobie's house there. And then at the left we have rodeos. Um, I try to I try to differentiate the darker houses. So um, Rodeo, which is here at the left, and Draco Malfoy, they have well Marshall, sorry, they have their own dark house where the rest of them fit more in with like just these standard stereotypical houses that I have for all of them. Um, across Privet Drive and Godric's Hollow, which is above. So yeah, um, I. Don't really decorate my beaches anymore um they're too difficult to decorate i hate them i really do but that's something i want to work on for the next island but look we have professor mcgonagall little lolly there but if we come up here we have our godric's hollow so i wanted this to feel like just closed in and very cozy and try not to take up too much space but as you can see all the houses are the same aside from draco's at the left but it's just all of the other professors and things like that. So yeah, I think this was cute, but I wish I changed the centre and had it less botanical and just a bit more city-like. Um, but yeah, some things I wish I changed and others that I, that I do. But here we are in Lopez's house, AKA James Potter. I wish I changed the interior of this a little bit, but we move, but this is um, my representation on if James, on James's house. Obviously very Gryffindor vibe. He's very proud of his furniture with books because he is smart um, and Lily obviously will be living with him, AKA Fauna, if you could have multiple villages living in the same house. But we'll leave Lopez and we'll come out here and it looks like Fadner's home, AKA my Professor Lupin. This is one of my favorite houses, weirdly. It's very brown but I think it's so cozy and open and I don't know I just really like it oh Lupe, uh, Lupez um, Fang and Shep aka Hagrid and Lupin are hanging out together which is cute but yeah it's very brown but very cozy and this is one of my favorite ones and I thought it'd be fun to have the anatomical painting at the right there just to represent what you see in the Prisoner of Azkaban um, and they're learning about werewolves so I thought that was fun to have in there as well um, considering but yeah this is his house I've got all the speed builds to everything and I will be putting um, some cards up if I remember just to link to each video for each of the areas to represent like the speed build so if you like an area you can just be directed to the speed build for it but I don't have all of the areas um, videoed so apologies for that. That cliff there, there's nothing on it. It's just some more, it was just some more nature 
on the little bridge coming out of Godric's Hollow and Nook's Cranny. But if we go further back, you can see we have the entrance to Diagon Alley. I'm so sad that I didn't record this, but I just never got round to it, it seems like. But we enter Diagon Alley and we start with Quality Quidditch and we have just some trophies and the vaulting poles to represent broomsticks and some like newspapers and things for the Sirius Black. And then directly to the right of it we have the Elops Owl Emporium and just some owls and books and things to study up. Honestly, doing these buildings was a lot of fun. It was just the cliffs with fencing, the castle walls, stalls, simple panels, and the face cut out things. And then behind it was silos, um, just to represent uh, further rooms. It's a bit messy at the back, but I think it works out well. And using the fences to cover up the bottom half of the simple panels works really well as well, to make it look like a little balcony, instead of it just being a random doubled window. So yeah. I really liked how that worked. And then we have the Emporium for the owls. Same thing, the silo with the castle walls and stuff like that, and just owls scattered around. Then the very, very talented artist who created this for the Weasleys. Like, how mad is that? It is genuinely mental, the skill that this artist has. Like, all of the codes are linked down below, but they are just next level. <laughs> you could not have asked for a better code for this. But yeah, look at that for the Weasleys, Weasleys Wizarding Weezers. And just I put a bunch of random items around just to represent the chaos that is the Weasley store. Just like the gnomes and things like that and the clacker carts and the street organs. And I have like a confetti machine and a bubble machine up at the top with a little magic kit just to have that little representation. And then we have Nocturne Alley in the middle, but we'll get to that later. And we have Ollivanders. So here is where you can get your wand. Yeah, I just made it very dark and grey because that's kind of how it looks in the films and it matches the simple panels. Using the cube lights behind the simple panels works really well to represent the lights. So I would highly recommend using them if you want to create fake windows. And I just used the vintage dresses at the left and right in the dark and the wood just to make it look like some wand boxes. And then we have the Able Sisters for Madame Malkin's robes. I just thought that would be the perfect way to incorporate incorporate the ables in there and there's a little access point to the left upstairs and you can just get your fitted for your robe so I put like the Gryffindor jumper at the left and then we have the Hufflepuff and Slytherin like plaid plaid pattern just getting made there as well ready for some clothing and then directly to the right we have Gringotts and um, I thought the museum was really perfect for Gringotts um because with the white kind of grandness to it all um and I put like the dragon at the back there and use like the gold carts to represent the like mineshaft kind of vibe it has or just with lots of gold um and ornaments and things just to represent the fact that it was you know the bank I guess um not happy with it but we move and then we have the final place in Diagon Alley which is Flourish and Bots so just a little miniature notebook a uh, notebook um bookstore here nothing special but just a little cute area just to end off Diagon Alley and ignore the lag, it is extreme on my island. <laughs> but if we move down, we just have the Hogwarts flag and this brings you back to the beginning. As I say, the layout's all over the place. But yeah, this is just where you can go in from King's Cross at the right. And we have the Black Lake. So I'll come back later at night when it's all glowy with the Patronus at the back there. But it just has all the Dementors and like the gnarly trees and things like that and I just thought it was a really cool little area just to represent the Prisoner of Azkaban which is my favourite of the films if you couldn't tell and here's just a little ode to the Goblet of Fire um, where they all have to go swimming so I just put the shark head for Crumb and then the uh, glowing moss jar to represent the gillyweed that Neville gives Harry in the films and then the little carts as well you're being brought down there with the Thestrals. And if we go further back here, this is to the right of Diagon Alley, this is the Weasley's house. So this is the Burrows, which is where my Molly character is. Lots of gnomes all around, a little tree in a well with the car. And I just try to make it feel very farmlandy. And if we go inside, we'll see one of my favorite houses. And this is Molly's house. And she's crafting, which I guess feels fitting. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make it cosy and bright and just full of colour and warmth and just lots of gyroids all around it and 
cobwebs because it's clean but there's, there's animals living there and just lots of food going on and just to make it feel lively some muggle items so the chest um not the chest piece the um robot with the phone just to make it feel like the the authors collected some items and leaving here we'll cut our way back through diagon alley to nocturne alley ignore the lag once again please <laughs> so if we go through here I want her to feel it spooky so I put like the barrels and things and made it feel tight so you have to like waddle through everything and this is where we enter into Borgen and Beck's so we have our mysterious crystal balls and like the jewellery stand there to represent the locket necklace and then we just have lots of dark furniture lots of creepy things like the gothic mirror the cursed statue in the display cabinet the dark street organ some urns and vases and then like a mysterious sewing box with a skeleton all the glowing moss stands and then the, of course the vanishing cabinet there at the left and yeah and like the pretending it's like an evil sorting hat and then further up we have like a snake skin representation on the thing there and then like the harp to represent the harp in the in the philosopher's stone so yeah i'm quite proud of this i thought there was quite a lot of references and i think it was a cute job and if we make our way out here we enter into the hogwarts express so it's all the um uniforms around it and then i made it all cozy and red with the animals as well as having the little mention of the dementors in there as well but we just have the school uniform and like the toad at the right there and then the cage to represent the to represent scabbers with the trolley with all the food on it so yeah that's potentially scabbers and then we have the different compartment for the slytherins there at the left and just a book to pretend someone's studying and as you come off the hogwarts express you enter into hogwarts so i'm quite proud with how this turned out i made it all symmetrical because i felt like it was fitting but if we go to the right here we have hogsmeade village so I use all the doll houses because there wasn't much space but I still wanted a way to represent it and so I just used lots of the doll houses and I used the little because Hogsmeade train station is there as well so I used that um gyroid as a dementor I thought it was really cute and used the um I think they're called the retro suitcases or something along the lines of that in the red to represent the Hogwarts Express and yeah so that was our little Hogsmeade and then if we go back up here we have Hogwarts. So if we go inside, we enter straight into the Great Hall and the tables, as you can see. Oh, well, of course we have to get sorted first. So as you can see, we're in Gryffindor. And at the left, we have Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff for the tables. We have Dumbledore's outfit with the sorting hat at the right. And then we have Hagrid, McGonagall, Umbridge and Snape going left to right at the back as well with all of the flags and the statues that are guarding the place so i thought this was cute i thought i did a good job in just representing the different tables with all the different colors um and then if we make our way to the right we just have a little open area just to represent the castle and when you go inside this is just going to be some of the castle rooms which i'll quickly go over and again i'll have everything linked so you can in the playlist link down below so you can see how everything was created so ignore the cockroaches as well there's a lot of time traveling that went on but this is a prefect's bathroom so we have all the sinks and then like the cups of polyjuice potions smoking and then all the books and the potions lab to represent that it was getting made as well as all the toilets and the picture on the back wall just to represent the mermaids so they're up on the wall and i do like how this turned out but i'd hate when you look at it from this angle because you can see the piano um, and i don't like the bath yeah you know when you do things and you're proud of them at the time and then when you look back like a couple weeks later you're like why did i do that that's my entire I thought on everything on this island <laughs> but if we go to the back room here we have the Slytherin common room so nothing special but I just wanted it to feel dark and spooky but very royal kind of looking so I put the pillars and used the green lighting with the candles and the vintage antique sofas in black I think it's cool again wish I could have done more with it but and then if we go to the right here we have the Hogwarts kitchens I'm honestly I think this is my favorite room actually one of the favorite rooms that I've done in this in this house and um, we have all the Dobbies talking all the Dobbies all the house elves talking in just the kitchen and I just think it's really fun and you have the picture on the right on the left wall by the door to represent the pair that you have to tickle to get in i i don't know 
I think it's really cute and fun and I think it's just yeah the speech bubbles make it a lot better than it is in my opinion but I think it's fun and I do like it but yeah let us now just move on and if we move along I believe if I remember correctly it is the Ravenclaw common room once we get through here yes this is the Ravenclaw common room as you can see it's sparkly and blue and it's got the flags at the back with talking bookcases. I think this is a really fun room. I feel like it gets that elegance across that the Ravenclaws have while still making it feel like astrological, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, I used the galaxy flooring, but I put the rug over it so it wasn't too obnoxious, if that's the right word, um, with just a telescope so they could look at the stars and a little chart at the back and just a little study area at the right there. And I think it's very cute. The wedding arches honestly do everything. The wedding furniture, because that's a wedding wall and like the wedding pillars and things like that so honestly the wedding furniture is spot on for this island and if we make our way down i think this is really fun we have snape uh snape's outfit at the back there just lots of cauldrons and very dungeony i try to make it feel like and just very dark and dingy and i think i did a good job i like how it looks and then last but not least, as we leave the dungeons, we make our way upstairs to the room of requirement. So I wanted this one to have quite just like random items, but items that could tell a story. So we have some vases that could be cursed, the ship in a bottle, and the skeleton, the bird cage to represent the bird Draco uses with the vanishing cabinet and the diadem on top of it. Um, obviously for the for the um, Horcrux and then lots of random things really. I feel like the, if you're doing a room for requirement just make it feel vintage and random and spooky but yeah use cobwebs honestly best decision just use cobwebs everywhere and yeah just fill it with your heart's content full of absolutely random things lots of pictures uh, just to give it that vibe that there was there's something there's something there because those pictures can talk technically um so yeah just fill it with whatever you want really that was just my vibe when i was doing it anything that you think makes sense will make sense if you put your story to it but that is the right side of the castle so yeah oh, it's getting quite dark now so all the lights are getting extra glowy but if we make our way down we have a little miniature quidditch reference so if we make our way down we have gryffindor versus slytherin with the trophies and you can't see but i've used like the fishing rod stand and um, behind this wheat field here and during the day it looks like broomsticks um but using the vaulting poles on top of a qr code looks like the Quidditch brooms and then I also have the trail of spiders going down to the bottom right which we'll see later on and just some boots and things to represent that they're getting ready for a match but down there is just Hogsmeade just for reference on where we are but if we make our way up here to the left is the castle here so this is just another exit we have the owlery that you can climb up so I put the mailboxes here and I just put some owls and some custom QR codes on the pillows so the zen cushions and the normal cushions and the scattered papers and the stack of documents and the parcels at the back there just to represent the mail that's being delivered or getting ready to send off and if we make our way down here we have Deathly Hallows references so this is the lake with the sword of Gryffindor in and um, when the Patronus brings him down I wish I put another stag somewhere but it's too late now um and there was no room really I was running out of space to do things in the campsite here here's the campsite we have a wand on the log stool and the radio when they hear about Snape being the new headmaster and things like that and just a book and little representation there of their time in the Deathly Hallows when they're searching for the Horcruxes and then if we make our way down here is the end of the Hogsmeade village with the trail of spiders coming down and if you go further down here we'll put his robes back on we come to Hagrid's hut so here I just made a little farm area with pumpkins obviously and just some other fruit and veg just to vary it up a little bit and put a scarecrow with some water spots just to make it feel a bit more muggy and swampy and less pristine and if we go inside this is another one of my favorite houses it reminds me of Molly's it is very cluttered and cozy and welcoming yeah I'm quite happy with it and got a thing of pumpkin 
chicken soup there going on and we have Fang at the back by the oven eating some food and just put the stockings on the wall to represent Hagrid's love for all the houses and the keeper of keys of course and just plants and just things hanging from the ceiling very rustic and just very cozy and homely and I just thought it was I don't know very patchworky and yeah I'm really happy with how this room turned out but as we leave we follow the spiders a bit more and we come across Buckbeak little memorial thing for him I know he doesn't actually die but it was the only way I could represent him as always a little stall for Buckbeak he's just a bit of a continuation and if we look up we have the Whomping Willow so I put the cave moss moss mossy cave behind it um, and then just like the bonsai tree with the spiders leading up to it just to make it look as all that hole that leads to the shrieking shack with the car of course that brings them into the tree so that was just a little representation of that with the in-game campsite behind but yeah i really like the whomping willow i thought it was a fun little just a little area little miniature area and we just make our way back through hogsmeade we're getting close to the end of the island now thank you if you've watched this far along it's a long video so i do apologize for that but if we make our way along here we have the greenhouses so just lots of stalls tables put the headphones on there and some chopping boards and things like that just to represent the mandrakes and then we have professor sprout's outfit there um, and use lots of the gyroids just to represent the the mandrakes as well and just the unique plants and put like the mario plant there <laughs> as well because i thought it would be quite fitting yeah just lots of different plants that would fit in a magical film i felt if we go up here because I forgot to show this bit. Um, this is the back of Nook's Cranny, which is where I showed the pathway earlier. To the left is Godric's Hollow, if you remember. Um, this is just where we were before. This is why I say the layout's not very good. I wish I had a bit more thought that went into it. Um, but if you climb up here, we just have the grave for James and Lily Potty. Pot Potty? <laughs> James and Lily Potter. And then, yeah, we have the stag and then the lily to represent both James and Lily, of course. And then we have the white gravestone at the right there to represent Ignotus Peveril. I can never remember how the name's pronounced, but you know, that dude in the Deathly Hallows when they find a symbol on his grave. Um, but yeah, this is just my little little remembrance for James and Lily Potter. And if we make our way back down and we come down here, we will we, 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 we will make our way up through the castle grounds to the courtyard. So this is just a little courtyard area that I did if you're outside. And then if we go along here, we just have some benches and books and a chess area. And yeah. And if we look all the way up, that's meant to be my little little piece to remember the Goblet of Fire with the with the bow patterns that arrive. And here is just a little area for the secret beach for Dobby with his sock and his little grave. Bless him. But if we come back down, yeah, it's just a courtyard, nothing too special. But if we make our way up, this took quite a lot of figure out how figuring out which way I liked it. Quite a bit of time, but I finally got there. And if we go up, this is just some more castle rooms and places like that. In my head, this was gonna turn out a lot better than it did. Ignore the cockroaches again. Like I said, it was <laughs> a lot of time traveling to find a good day and time. But yeah, this is, I'm not happy with it. I wished it was different. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's for the Yule Ball. So it's another great haul technically, but yeah, let me know what you think down below. I wasn't too fussed on it. I was quite disappointed with this one, but I didn't know how else to do it. And if we go to the left, we have another fun room. This is my um, divination classroom for Professor Trelawney. I think it's really cute. Um, it just has all of the... I always forget the names for all of the items, but those stools with the tassels on and those like miniature tea tables. And so I just put like the curtains at the back. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's it's cosy, it's mysterious looking, it's dark. I don't know. I just thought it looked good. And then we have like the crystal ball at the front and then the teacups and I don't know. I just like how this one looked at the end. And we just have some more teacups at the right there as well, just for students to get their cup. And if we go to the back here, Gryffindor common room. This one I think is really cute. And um, we have the fat lady at the front. Um, little, there's lots of pictures. Harp at the back there with the trophy and the Gryffindor flags as well with the frog, the toad, sorry, and then Hedwig as well on the wall. A little study area. We have a cat bed. We have the Marauder's map in front of the fire. I, I don't know, I just think there's quite a lot of references in this one and I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's very Gryffindor-esque and very cosy and welcoming and just warm 
like perfect for a winter area and just yeah there's Trevor and then Hedwig up at the top right and just a little spot to write letters and a little place to sit in front of the fire with the cat bed for Crookshanks and things like that so yeah I'm really happy with how this one turned out and if we go to the right we have the Hufflepuff common room again please ignore the cockroaches but I put lots of butterflies in this one and um, I thought it was fitting lots of yellow and botanical things and the barrels to represent the entrance and lots of yellow and brown tones I know obviously it's yellow and black mostly but I thought it was actually quite reminiscent of Hogwarts Legacy which I didn't realise until I'm looking at it now. Um, I did it before Hogwarts Legacy came out but the common room it's, it gives me that vibe actually um, so that was unintentional but a happy accident um, but yeah just lots of yellow and it's very cosy and bright and yeah I like it I think it's happy and cute and bright. And then if we make our way upstairs, we have just a classroom. So this was going to be my Defense Against the Dark Arts classroom. So I put the spider on the pedestal there and just use the tables with the antique stools, I think they're called, and just books and things around it and just a chalk, a, a chalk board. Very, very simple, but I think it gets the aesthetic across. That's all to say for this one, really. Not a whole lot going on for it. <laughs> and last but not least, we have the final room, which is the basement. I'm really proud with how this turned out, and this is my chamber of secret. I think it looks really spooky. I think I did a really good job with this one. I'm really, really proud of it. I mean, the glowing moss did like all of the work for me but I thought the references were cool with all like the tunnels at the left and right and the statues that go down the pathway and just the dead bodies with the solar Gryffindor, the diary. And then we have the, the head statue there to represent um, Salazar Slytherin's head, of course, and just lots of glowing moss hanging from the ceiling and just lots of fire and I I don't know I really love how this one turned out and I put like the fire effect and the smoke effect on all the statues as well just to make it feel a bit creepier and that is all of the interiors for the resident houses and I'm not gonna go and go through and do all the villager houses I've got all the videos for them so they'll all be linked down below in the playlist and um, if you're interested in seeing the other houses but if we make our way out and if you couldn't tell, we've got our Quidditch outfit on, so any guesses to what we're doing next? Dun dun. <laughs> I feel like there should be some dramatic music. <laughs> I'm trying to hide everything at the right, but oh, before we do here, if you couldn't tell, it is the Quidditch maze. We'll go all the way up here. I just thought it'd be a good idea to pop a little reference to the Philosopher's Stone here as well. I forgot to add it. Oh no, I do add it here, I think. Yeah, we've got Harry's cake. So we'll just pretend, you know, that that's always been there. But yeah, we have the little shack in the Philosopher's Stone when Hagrid is first introduced, which is rocks in the boat and things like that. Just a little reference to it. And then if we make our way down, we have the Quidditch maze. So this is just like the little area where everybody could sit and watch, um, just for some food and things on the stalls and just like the grates and things and like the lights and stuff like that um and if we go through we have the maze it took quite a while to figure out how i wanted this to look but i think i finally got somewhere good in the end with it and then i mean it's a very very simple maze i mean there's only literally two directions you can go <laughs> um in the very clearly dead-ended one so yay that was a dead end <laughs> Mazes are not my strong suit. Um, people who can make mazes, like, shout out to you. Cause they are hard. But if we go up here, we have the first reference, which is the Sphinx. Um, and you have to do a riddle to get by, but you can just climb up here and go down. And if we go down here, um, we just have a little Dementor hiding, um, which is one of the things. And that's a dead end there. And then if we go up, and all the way back. I tried to I use all the climbing things to make it a bit more intricate because it was just so boring. But if we just make our way up and all the way back, we enter to the trophy. So yeah, you've grabbed onto the trophy and now you have to, and you've won the Triwizard Maze. So you have to go down the pipe because it's a board key. And oh no, look where you turn up the, um, the graveyard from the Goblet of Fire. So I have like the kettle, the kettle, kettle bathtub thingy um, for the massive cauldron and then all the death eaters around and then the dagger on the floor um, there where my characters walked over and the cup is at the right there with the skeleton for 
a particular person, rest in peace, Mr. Diggory. Um, and then we have the statue at the back to represent the gravestone that Harry gets put on for his father's graves, Voldemort's father's graves, sorry, um, and just some more graves around the area. And then, yeah, so that was my area for that. And that's everything on the island, actually. I thought it would be nice to end it back at the Black Lake. Um, now that it's all going to be glowy and you can see the Patronus. I genuinely just want to thank you all so much for all of the support and getting 140 subscribers and just all of the love and everything that I've had on my videos for this island. It's honestly been such a heartwarming journey for me and it's pushed me right out of my comfort zone. So I really do appreciate every single one of you guys who have showed any sort, any form of support, whether subscribing, leaving a comment or leaving a like, you know, or just viewing it, you know, everything. It does mean the world to me. And this was a huge, huge step outside of my comfort zone. And the fact that so many people like what I do is just like, <laughs> terrifying um but yeah i really do love you all and i hope that you enjoyed this video i am going to be doing like a more aesthetic tour next week for monday so keep your eyes up on the lookout for that um so it's going to be like snapshots of the island rather than a full guided tour so for those who don't want to listen to me ramble on for the entire thing there will be that to look forward to and then we'll be starting on the next island and some island tours so I hope that you guys stick around for that as always please take care i love you all and i wish you all the best and i'll see you on monday next week with the next one bye bye for now